2006, I was assigned to a task force that um, was resurrecting the cold case of Notorious B.I.G., Biggie Smalls. And a group of people, including myself, began to look back over what was now a decade of investigative history. When I was in the police department, crime was the biggest thing with hip hop. And the police department didn't really understand the correlation between the hip hop music world and the crime. So that's where I came into play. I'll tell you how the East Coast, West Coast riff started. The problem was, it wasn't the problem between so much Tupac and Biggie, it was between Puffy and Suge Knight. They don't have respect for the West Coast out here. Yeah, there was just, um, you know, friction that had developed between Puffy Combs and Suge Knight, and then uh, their artists began to beef between Biggie and Tupac, and then ultimately the gangs that they associated with out here in Los Angeles, both West Coast gangs, Crips and Bloods, joined the, uh, the fray. For the Crips out here in Los Angeles, there was a relationship with Puffy Combs, and so when Sean Combs was beginning to have issues with Suge Knight, he brought these Crips around him to kind of create a barrier of protection. Suge Knight, when he was developing his label, and his gang associates just naturally came with him. More on the life and death last night of rapper Tupac Shakur, the singer who always seemed to be in the middle of trouble. I'm pretty much the only detective that traveled to Las Vegas and to Los Angeles. Vegas was still in the dark about the hip hop culture. As a matter of fact, LA was as well, because these guys didn't know anything about hip hop. The Vegas PD wasn't so cooperative. LAPD had a lot of problems with the um, corruption. Las Vegas PD guys were very concerned about what information they were going to disseminate to what agencies. Another gangster rapper gunned down. This time, 24-year-old Victorious B.I.G. killed in an apparent drive-by shooting outside a Los Angeles party early Sunday. Well, I think it got very real the confrontations backstage at award shows and the, the, the violence that was being played out in some of the songs. All of a sudden now you have two extremely prominent members of that music culture gunned down, their lives cut short out of nowhere, you know. They're here and gone. Look how quickly guys that are bigger than life can be, you know, have their lives extinguished. Between 96 and 98, you had other Homicides occur with other rappers too, you know, and there were guys who affiliated with rap music artists that got killed. So the commissioner, he said, uh, Derek, I got to sit down with you and try to pick your brain about why there's, there's so much crime in this community. Really what we were looking for was what were the songs saying? What were some of the lyrics saying? It helped to support uh, the motives and the theories that we thought were behind the murders. So you could see the conflict that uh, was existing between these record labels and some of their music. Today's times, not only has the music changed, but the way to do investigations has changed a lot too. Back in the 80s and 90s, uh, law enforcement, especially in Los Angeles, we, we called it proactive policing, but we were very aggressive. Uh, we met violence with violence. If you ran from the police, you knew that you were gonna get your ass kicked if you got caught. That was just an understanding that we had. And it was a way that we would, at least we would be attempting to curb gang violence. Um, you know, we've learned in time that it doesn't necessarily work. At the time, we thought that was the right way of doing business. When Tupac and Biggie were murdered, there was such a adversarial relationship between the police and, uh, and the gang culture. The most prominent theory at the time, publicly, was that uh, corrupt LAPD officers were involved in the murder of Biggie Smalls. And that was what was out, um, you know, kind of prevailing in the media. And uh, kind of accepted that as being true. It was like us against them, and everybody was like, well, I'm not talking, I'm not saying what happened. And then the police department had to go out and just find out. Tupac had this great prison interview. He says, I'm not against the police, I'm just against bad police. And, and that's a profound statement because we generalize. We think that people from gangs just oppose the police and the police oppose gangs. But when we individualize it and you start to say, hey, these cops are doing a good job and they're trying their best in difficult circumstances. Same thing with these gang members. They've got difficult issues to contend with every day on the streets. 
and that's how they get to that point in their life. And when you can start to individualize it and respect and appreciate um, the background of it all, then there doesn't have to be conflict.